Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about greatness and you are created for greatness. Let me just say that again, even if you're not feeling it today, I want you to know you are created for greatness and you can just say that aloud, give yourself a little lecture right now. I am created for greatness. Why? How? Because that's how God made you because you are actually made to reflect the very image of God. You are a vessel made to carry the greatness of God. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to have a really good time. You're going to be refreshed, encouraged, built up as we go through this short little study today. So before we dive in, I want to welcome those of you who are joining me for the very first time. My name is Ruth Hendrickson. If you want to learn more about myself and about the ministry, RHM International, please go to the website. It is ruthhendrickson.org. On there, you're going to find all sorts of resources to help you out. It's also where you can connect to our emotional healing and deliverance team. The name of that team is Masha. They minister around the world. You can find out all the information on there. Also, how to get trained if you want to learn the model yourself. There's also all sorts of books and blogs and just a lot of stuff on there. So I just want to invite you to go take a look, ruthhendrickson.org. While you're there, join our email list. We only send out one to two emails a week. Definitely don't want to bombard you, but do want to keep you in the loop. All right. Greatness, greatness, greatness. Okay. So what's something that you've seen that has changed your description or enlarged your description of the world? Like natural wonders is what I'm talking about. I live in the United States, so I may think about something like the Grand Canyon. Uh, I was there when I was 16 years old and it really made an impression and I'm actually going to be going back shortly and I'm really looking forward to it. So the Grand Canyon, just to see all those caverns and the rocks and hey, speaking of rocks, another thing is Sedona in Arizona It is all the red rocks. My husband's an excavation contractor. So I see lots of different rocks. And so just to see all that red rock, the massive, massive, massive mounds of red rock was amazing. Or how about the vastness and the beauty of the a Appalachian Trail for those of you who like hiking, or I'm also a beach goer. So I love the ocean. I just love the sand and I love the ocean. I, I prefer it when there's palm trees there because I like the warmth. But you know the, these beautiful, beautiful wonders that are all around us that God created, what about Mount Everest? Now, I've never been to Mount Everest, but I'm sure some of you have. And, you know, what is it, you know, think about this, you would view it one way from a distance. It would look very different if you were standing at the base. And yet, both of those views would probably be, be um, what's the word I want, like skewed or, or, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't match what would happen if you actually got to the top. And as you began to transverse up, the view would just change and change and change of the world around you. Because the higher we go, the different things look. The higher we go, the more our vision is expanded, okay? The higher we go, everything looks differently. So in Ephesians 1, 18 and 19, Paul's actually praying for the Ephesian believers. In the New Living Translation, it says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given those he has called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. You know, let me just stop there. Not only are you created for greatness, but you are God's rich and glorious inheritance. And I just want you to hear that. All right, I've read it out of the New Living. I want to take it out of the Holman Christian Standard. I pray that the perception of your mind may be enlightened so you would know what is the hope of, the call, of his calling, what are the glorious riches of his inheritance among the saints. Okay, so the reason I, I chose both of those, these is the New Living Translation. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. Holman Christian. I pray that the perception of your mind may be enlightened. You see, this concept, the biblical concept of heart in, you know, again, the biblical concept. So what we find in scripture is that the heart is the center of our physical and spiritual being. It combines the intellectual understanding and the personal affection. Hearts flooded with light, perceptions of our minds uh, enlightened. Okay, we bring those together. If we go on to verse 19, it says, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his vast strength? Some translations actually surpassing greatness of his power. Okay, so, so the working of his vast strength, 
the immeasurable power, the surpassing greatness of his power. The Greek word used here for surpassing literally, literally means to throw over greatness. Okay, think about that. Surpassing power, vast power, a measurable power, throwing over greatness. It takes the concept of greatness and it basically takes it and it's throwing it or catapulting it into an entirely different realm than what we understand. Let's take this one step further. Second Corinthians 4, 7. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. It makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. In other words, okay, God created you in such a way that when he chooses to work through you, when he chooses to work through me, it will be obvious, just say it will be obvious that the power comes from him and not from us. Okay, so it will be obvious. We want to be those fragile vessels carrying the power of God, carrying his imaginable greatness, carrying, carrying that surpassing power for all the world to see. So again, God created you and I in such a way that when he chooses to work through us, it will be obvious, to say it will be obvious that the power is from him and not, you know, it's within him and not within us. We're supposed to be acting and carrying ourselves in such a way that we're pointing directly to him. We're pointing, you know, it's like we, we do become less and he becomes more because we reflect his image. We, we radiate that, we carry that greatness. So as I was thinking about this, I, just, I got to thinking about a showcase, okay? So think about a showcase. Um, you know, a, a showcase will contain or house something. Okay, it's a showcase, it's not closed in, it's, it's shown so that people can view it. Okay, it's putting something on display. You are a showcase for the power of God, period. You are created to be a showcase for the power of God. Say it one more time. You are created to be a showcase for the power of God. Let me give you a little tip here. Um, you know how sometimes our power goes out, at least here in the Northeast, we'll get a blizzard, we'll get a severe thunderstorm, um, you know, and, and our power might go out for a while. And we have to deal with that. But the thing is, there's never a power shortage or everyone can be running their air conditioners in certain parts of the country if you get a heat wave and the power goes out because there's an overload on the system. There is never ever an overload on God's power grid. Some of you live in nations where you don't have the air conditioners and you don't have the furnaces and, and you're saying, what's it like to even have a power outage. Okay. This is what I want you to hear. There is never a shortage in the provision of God. There is never a shortage in the greatness of God. There is never a shortage in the, in the provision of God. Okay. There is never a shortage. And too often we pull him into our realm with our understanding. When he's saying, I want you to come up higher I want you to see my surpassing greatness. I want to take your definition of greatness to a whole new level. I want to expand your ability to see. I want to expand your ability to understand. I want to expand what your heart is grasping of my greatness. But in order to do that, I must have surpassing i must take the greatness and throw it into a whole nother realm so that so that, because if we try to stay here we can't showcase the glory of god because his greatness is beyond what we know it's beyond what we can see so but again to remember there is never ever a power shortage with god therefore he can handle whatever comes our way which means we can handle whatever comes our way if we are truly asking him to show us from his perspective, just like I talked about Mount Everest, it would look different from a distance than from the base, would look different from the base than from halfway up. It would look different you know, um, at the very top than it would halfway up. Okay, the higher we go, the more we surpass what we normally see, 
the greatness that, you know, the, the larger our view of the greatness of God is going to be. There is never a power, power shortage with God. He can handle whatever comes our way. The question is, are we going to handle whatever comes our way ourselves? Or are we going to remember that we showcase the all surpassing power of God? There's never a power shortage with him. Therefore, we're going to hang on to him and trust him to get us through, trust him to help us see it differently, to view it differently. And to, so, um, so here's the thing again, um, you are created for greatness. You are created to be a, a carrier showcase of the power of God. To see the power of God, we have to go into a whole nother level. So there's that invitation to understand, to go deeper. He wants to really let our hearts be consumed with that. Let our understanding be increased so that the fullness of him begins to radiate and that the world sees as we showcase his power that there is never a power, power shortage, that he's got you, he's got me, he's got us. We could trust him. As the song goes, he's got the whole world in his hands and that's nothing for him because of his all surpassing greatness. So let's just pray. So Heavenly Father, so often we encounter things where it doesn't feel like, like there's enough power. It, it doesn't, it, it could feel Lord like there's a power shortage. So right now we speak by the power and authority of the true Lord Jesus Christ. We speak into those areas of our lives where it feels like there's a power shortage. And right now we just, I, I just want you to like take both hands of cord in your hands and go and both ends in your hands and go and connect it and say, Lord, right now, I ask you to do a connection because in your realm, in the heavenly realms, who you are, there is no power shortage. There is no, there is no shortness of anything that comes from heaven. So father, right now we align ourselves. We plug into you. We plug into the kingdom of God. Father, expand us. We want to throw off our understanding of your greatness and go to a whole nother level. We want to throw our understanding right with you into a whole nother level so that we can grow in who you are. So God, right now, we decree and declare that we are a showcase for the power of God. Just say, I am a showcase for the power of God. There is never a short power shortage with God. Just say that. I decree and declare there's never a power shortage with God. You are standing on the word of God and the promises of God when you decree or declare that. And my God can handle whatever comes my direction. Just say that my God can handle whatever comes my direction. So Father, again, just increase, increase, increase that we can radiate, that we can show off who you are even better because God, you have, you have created us in such a way that we are fragile and we contain this great treasure that the, it will be clear as people look at us that the power comes from you and not from us. So Father, we won't take the glory. We want to give it to you. You are amazing. You are good. You are great. And we just praise you and we glorify you and we worship your name in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Once again, thank you for joining me today. You can find us on the podcast, Real Truth with Ruth. You can also find us on the social media pages. You can find us on Facebook and also YouTube. Just want to join you, encourage you to keep connecting with us, keep growing with us as we go to represent, to shine forth the kingdom of God on the face of this earth. He wants to shine through you. He can shine through you. Allow him to shine through you. If there's some polishing needs to be done, let him do it because you are here for such a time as this. He has plans and purpose for your life. You are created for greatness. Have a great day and be so blessed.